Hello, in this session I'll talk about a couple of tools that allow you to mass activate OData services and also allows you to mass maintain uh, business roles in the front end server. Uh, that can also be transported to the backend server later on. Uh, so with the knowledge of these tools, you'll be able to do your SAP Fiori Architect uh, job in a much more easier manner. Uh, so to start with, we'll start with the mass activation of OData services. Uh, so for that, you need to run this task list, SAP Gateway Activate OData as serve. Uh, and you also need to have the SAP Note 2630153 installed on your system. Uh, so in the previous past, we have used the IWFND main service. And here you can uh, choose, uh, say, let's take this uh, OData service right here. And you can uh, see if it is activated. So currently it is activated because I can see the green uh, signal here. Uh, but you can say if it is, let's say, let's deactivate it for now. Uh, so this uh, service is deactivated. And let's also deactivate the one more. So I'm going to deactivate these two OData services. Um, but assume you have about 50 or 60 or maybe even 100 OData services uh, that you want to activate uh, and you can't go searching for each OData service and activate them individually. So you need some kind of a tool. So this is what I'm going to show you. Uh, so right now we have these two OData services, the planned orders and the promise to pay overview uh, that is deactivated and we want to activate these OData services. Uh, so for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this tasklet, SAP Gateway Activate OData Serve. So let me go to my front-end server. And I type in the transaction code STC01 and SAP Gateway Activate OData Serve. I'm going to execute this. Now, there are a few steps in this, um, so very basic steps. Uh, so the first thing is we want to make sure that, uh, uh, that we have a, a package uh, for transportation. Uh, so right now, I'm just going to use my local package, uh, dollar $temp, uh, but you can also have uh, your own transports uh, defined here. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to define the OData services for activation. So I'm going to check on that. And here I'm going to list all the OData services that I want for activation. Uh, so in my case, I have uh, uh, these two OData services. I believe I didn't type uh, copy it correctly. So it's a C and uh, let's see. Promise to pay overview. Okay, so I have these two OData services here. Let me save it. So I have two defined OData services. In your case, you may have about 50, 60, maybe 100, 200 as well. Uh, so it's a fast way of doing uh, maintaining all these OData services. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is I want to check the third one, the select processing mode. And I go into filling the parameters here. So in my case, I'm using an embedded uh, deployment. My front-end server and the back-end server are on the same box. So I'm going to choose code deployed only. So if you're using a hub deployment, then you would use the routing-based option. Uh, the uh, embedded option is the recommended approach from SAP. Uh, so I'm using the embedded. I do the code deployed. I save it. So now we have the the last step, which is uh, selecting the OData services for activation. So in in the step two, we define all the OData services that we needed for activation. Here, if you wanted to uncheck some, you can uncheck. But I'm going to leave uh, both checked. So I will save it. I will exit. 
so now we are ready to run this uh, uh, this task list so let me go ahead and run this task list and it should go ahead and activate uh, it's completed successfully and you can see that the node got activated and the other node got activated as well so let me go ahead and double check in my IWFND so what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh this catalog because I had uh, deactivated it before now let me go and check if it is now active let me search for Z C so planned was one of the ones that I deactivated so now it is active and you can see that the promise to pay is also active okay so that is one of the tool that I wanted to show in this session so the next uh, the next uh, tool that I wanted to show is to mass maintain uh, business roles um, I'm pretty sure everyone knows uh, the basic uh, uh, the basic architecture of how the authorizations work um, so assuming the tile is the application uh, so that's a kind of a, uh, it's not the correct assumption but let's uh, for simplicity sake let's assume that the tile represents an application now for user a to see this application the following things need to happen the application needs to belong to a catalog uh, that needs to be assigned to a certain role and the user needs to be part of this role so if all this happens then user a can access application a or tile a and the group is so that the application can be seen in the home page uh, so if the application belongs to group a and this group a is assigned to role a and the user belongs to role a then the application will show up on the home page uh, if you don't specify the group, then the application won't show up on the home page. The user can still access the application. Uh, he just has to search for it. Okay, so in a lot of uh, customer scenarios, you will run into the into the case where you are uh, where you are. Uh, uh, creating custom catalogs you have to create custom roles uh, and then uh, and then it's time consuming if you have to do it individually uh, so there is a program uh, that you can create all these roles on the front end uh, fairly easily and again you will have to have all these nodes installed I believe uh, this node right here needs to be go on the back end and this is to create the transport these roles to the back end now it's fairly simple so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Fury Launchpad uh, uh, designer so let me go to the Fury Launchpad designer and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this SAP delivered catalog uh, so the way I can do it is I can just drag and drop it here and let me say custom catalog and I'll give it the name I'll give this as the name so I'm basically creating a copy of this catalog uh, in your use case uh, in your customer uh, scenario you may have uh, you may have created a, a whole bunch of custom catalogs and what I'm also going to do is I'm also going to create a custom group again in your scenario you may have created a whole bunch of uh, custom groups uh, I'm just going to say custom billing group and I'm going to give the name BCG for the group and I'll add a few tiles to this group uh, and what I'll do is uh, from the custom catalog I'll add a few tiles to this group 
okay so this group has now four tiles okay um, so now I need to create a business role uh, that has this catalog and that has this uh, group uh, again uh, you'll have multiple groups and multiple roles that you would have to create uh, so this tool comes in handy so the first thing you need to do is you need to create a file similar to this uh, the file needs to have a role name so I'm going to call this role a Z Milton demo role it needs to have a role description so I'm going to have a, a role description and then here this is the menu type it can either have the name cat provider or group provider uh, so if you're going to create a catalog inside this uh, role then you would use the word cat provider and then the name of the group itself so let me remove this line right here but this is how the file should be so in my case I have a role that I want to create on the front end I have a description for that role and this role should have a catalog inside of it and this catalog should be named this and I'm going to uh, have the same role uh, but this time I need to have a group provider and I need to have uh, this name of the group inside of this role and again I'll have a whole bunch of this so it really this tool doesn't really make sense if I'm just doing it for one but I'll, I'll probably have a whole bunch of this like a, a different role calls one one uh, different uh, catalogs and so on uh, but for simplicity's sake uh, right now I'm just doing one group one role uh, that has this uh, catalog and that has this group provider so I will save it so I have saved it in a file called roles.txt so what I need to do now is I need to go and run SE38 and then this right here PRG and create fury so let me do that. Let me go to my front end server. SC38. And run this. Now, what I want to do is I want to create a role. So I'm going to choose this option create roles with menu. I will say import from file and then I will provide the file name so the file name here is roles.txt so it is in my downloads folder so I will go to my downloads and there is my roles.txt file I will open it and I will execute this file Now this will show me a confirmation page. So is this what you want to do? Yeah, I want to create this role and I want to add this catalog into my role. I want to add this group into my role. So let me go ahead and execute it. And at this time it should create this role uh, for me. So let me double check if it did get created. So what I will do is I will run PFCG And the name of the role was, uh, I believe, Z. Let me double check the name of the role. Z Milton demo role. And I edit, and it is there. So it has already added the, my role. I go into menu to make sure that it has the right catalog. And if I go into the catalog, and uh, voila all the old data services are in here so uh, so this is a quick and easy way to create uh, a mass maintenance of uh, business roles thank you